Until now, we worked only with GLFW for windowing and uh, input event handling and also for the context, OpenGL context creation. But from time to time, I'm going to show you some examples how to use OpenGL with Pygame. Uh, because I know that many of you are using Pygame and want to learn OpenGL uh, or PyOpenGL using Pygame. So, at the end of this video, we are going to have the same result we had in the previous video. We are going to draw this textured cube with this transparent uh, cat PNG image. And I already typed out the code and I'm just going to briefly explain uh, how to do this inside Pygame. And of course, uh, I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of code to actually make this window resizable and also to make the context, the OpenGL context, resizable inside Pygame. Uh, by default, a Pygame window is a not resizable window, so as you can see, you cannot resize this window. So the first setting I like to do in every uh, windowing application is set the uh, window position. So in, in Pygame you can do this by importing the OS and setting the OS environment variable as the window or video window position to 400 and 200, which means the window will be always positioned from the uh, upper left corner of your screen, 400 to right and 200 pixels down. And I also set it here in my GLFW window here using the glf.set window position window 400 and 200. So this is how you can set the window position inside Pygame. These are the, just the usual imports, so importing from OpenGL all, also importing from from OpenGL.gl.shaders, the compile uh, program and the compile shader. And now we are importing Pygame instead of uh, GLFW and we also need the NumPy and also the peer model. And of course, don't forget to install Pygame using pip install Pygame. And one more information, I'm using Pygame version 1.9.6. So this is the later uh, stable uh, version, although uh, there's also Pygame version 2.0, and which is a development version, and I'm not sure if this code will wor work or not uh, in that version, because there are some changes. Uh, they will move Pygame from SDL1 to actually use SDL version 2. I will, we will see that if uh, in, in a later video, maybe when it gets fully released, I'm going to try this code also with Pygame version 2. So here we are the vertex source and nothing is changing in the vertex source. We have the attribute position, attribute color, attribute texture, also the uniform matrix rotation. And uh, so nothing is changing here. And also nothing is changing in the fragment source. And uh, we have the vertex buffer, here is, here is the same as in the previous video, so we have uh, vertices, then colors, then texture coordinates, although these colors are not used. Um, but uh, if you want to use these colors in the fragment shader, here I commented out this vector4 uh, v color, if you want to use them you just can delete this comment and multiply the the texture, uh, the output of the texture color with these vector four colors, and you will get a result, uh, which is this cat colored or color blended or what to, how to what is the correct um, name for this. So as you can see now, it has some blue and red and green tint this texture, but I'm just going to comment it out. So if you want to use, you can uncomment this uh, short line here. So as I said, nothing is changing in the vertex buffer, also nothing is changing in the index buffer. We still need to convert these two Python lists into an NumPy array. And here, now we are uh, creating a Pygame window, and to create actually a Pygame window, you uh, you need to call the pygame.init function and then set the pygame.display.setMode. Here I'm setting it to it size so it's 1280 by 720 and the flex the window flex so now we are setting it to pygame that opengl and also pygame the double buffer to actually use double buffering and by default if i go to the glw version a glw window by default creates a double buffered window um, but uh, in pygame you need to set this flag to actually use double buffering 
So here nothing is changing, we are just compiling the uh, vertex source and the fragment source to a vertex shader and a fragment shader. Here nothing is changing, we have a VBO and an element buffer object, or a vertex buffer object and an, and an element buffer object. We are setting the uh, vertex attribute at layout location 0 and the vertex attribute pointer. So this is the vertex positions, these are the vertex colors, and these are the vertex uh, texture coordinates. Here just uh, creating a texture. So this, these are the same as uh, when you are using uh, GLFW. The only thing is changing now we are creating a Pygame window and here when we load the uh, cat texture, now we are using the Pygame.image.load, giving it the textures and slash cat.png to actually flip this image. So as you, as you may remember in the previous video, we had to flip the image using peel, we use the image that transpose image that flip top bottom. So when you are you when you are using peel, when are when you are using pygame, you can do this with the pygame, the transform that flip, giving it the image and giving it the axis. So this is the x axis and this is the y axis. So the x is set to false because we, are, we don't want to flip the image on the x axis and the y axis is set to true because we want to flip the image only on the y axis. Then we are getting the image width and the image height using the image that get wrecked function that size and that size returns uh, a tuple of the image uh, width and height. So on the next line we are getting the image data, the raw image data using the pi game that image that two string, giving it the image and giving it the format RGBA. So red, red, green, blue, and alpha. And on the next line we are just setting the GL text image 2D. And uh, here we are using the image uh, width and the image height. And the last argument to this function is the actual image data. So this is how you can get uh, texture to in uh, Pygame. And here is everything the same. We are just setting to use the uh, shader program, setting the GL clear color, uh, enabling the depth testing and also the blending. And we are setting the GL blend func to GL source alpha and GL1 minus source alpha. Here uh, we are getting from the vertex shader the rotation location using the GL get uniform location. And here, here is the uh, how you can create a Pi game application loop or a game loop. I'm just creating a boolean running uh, true and I'm creating a while loop. So while running, the first thing is to get the actually events from the Pygame window. So we can do this for event in pygame.event.get. If event.type equals equals pygame.quit, then we are going to set the running equal to false. So when uh, when we click on this X on the window, this red X, the running variable, this event pygame.quit will fire and the running variable or, or boolean will be set to false. So this while loop will be terminated. And then I'm getting the uh, current time using the pi game the time that get ticks and divided this by 1000 to this returns the elapsed time since the pi game that in it was called uh, in milliseconds. But to get the actual milliseconds, you need to divide it by 1000. So this is the current time. Then I'm just calling the GL clear and uh, clearing the color buffer bit and also the depth buffer bit. Here I'm creating a rotation X and a rotation Y matrices using the peer module and the matrix 44 that from X rotation and matrix 44 with a capital M from Y rotation. I'm also just slowing down the rotation uh, by uh, multiplying the X rotation by, by 0 0.5 and the Y rotation by 0 0.8. And now here are the uniform matrix settings. And I said earlier that this won't, uh, maybe doesn't work in Pygame, but I'm just going to comment out this line and uh, uncomment un un this line. Uh, and it works. As you can see, it works uh, nicely. So you can use it like this, so rotation x times rotation y, or you can use it uh, like this, rotation x at rotation y, it also works. But I'm just going to use this peer.matrix44 with a lowercase m, that multiply and giving it the rotation x and the rotation y. 
And this GL uh, Uniform Matrix 4 FV will set the this Uniform Matrix 4 rotation uh, Uniform Matrix. So actually this uh, is uploading the matrices to this Uniform called Rotation. And the last, not the last, but uh, the next thing is actually using the uh, GL draw, draw elements, so index drawing, giving the GL triangles, the length of indices, the type of the data, which is GL outside int, and of course the offset, which is set to none. And the very last thing is just flipping the display by calling pygame the display that flip. And this does the same as in, in a GLFW window, the last line GLF that swap buffers on the window. So this just swaps or flips the buffers. So remember that we set the window to actually be here, a double buffered window. So it has a front and a back buffer. And the next thing I'm just going to add to this application is actually the window resize and also the context resize function functionality. So this is the only thing I'm just going to code in this window. To actually make a Pygame win Py Py window resizable, we need to add here another flag. So with a bitwise or operator, and this should be Pygame dot uh, resizable resizable. So set this flag to true or on. This is how you can set flags inside Pygame. So now that we set the Pygame that resizable flag on, now we have a resizable window. But as you can see, the context doesn't resize us with the window. So now the uh, this now that we set this uh, flag to resizable, we are getting every time we are we are resizing the window, we are getting a window resize event, and we need to catch this event inside the application loop. So in the while running, and here are all the events, and here I'm also going to add another if statement. So if the uh, event event dot type dot type equals uh, pygame dot uh, video resize uh, video resize so by resizing a video I mean the screen or the window you get this event pygame dot video resize and you can catch it and now using the gl viewport function gl viewport function which takes four arguments so the lower left uh, corner of the window which is zero zero and uh, width and the new width and the new height of the window you can get it by event event dot w which is which is the event dot width and the event event dot h which is the event height so now if i resize the window as you can see now the OpenGL context also resizes with the window. So you can, you may remember that in uh, in uh, GLFW we just created a separate function called window resize, which takes as its argument the window, the width and the height, and we also calling the GL viewport here, so with zero zero width and height, and then we are registering this function uh, where it is. It should be here somewhere. Ah, here it is. So we are registering this function using the set underscore video underscore size callback window and the window resize. So uh, you can do this uh, like this in the GLFW side. And if you are using Pygame, you just need to catch the window or the video resize event and also calling the GL viewport. And now with the event that width and the event that height.